Hi guys, this is Dr. Samal Yazad. What I'm going to do today is go over some of the characteristics of the vertebral column and talk about the differences that you can see between the cervical, thoracic, lumbar and also the uh, sacral and coccygeal part. As you can see here, I have some vertebrae sitting here and they are kind of irregularly shaped structures and some of them are not going to be look alike. What I'm going to do first, I'm going to give you some of the typical structures that you can find in every vertebrae. Then I will talk about the atypical ones that I mentioned the differences that you might be seeing. This vertebrae that you see here, this is a typical looking thoracic vertebrae. Each vertebrae in our body is composed of several parts. The anterior aspect of it is known as the body as you go toward the back, you can see two extension in either side. These are the known as the pedicles, the right and the left pedicles. As they come back, to ultimately they fuse and extend toward the back with converge. These two sections are known as the lamina, which conversion of those things produce this process known as the spinous process. The connection or the hole that is produced known as a vertebral column based on a boundary that has by way of the body, the pedicles, and lamina you can see. At the junction of the pedicle and lamina, you can see the two processes that extend laterally. These are known as a transverse processes. At the same time, every vertebrae, it has some articulating process on the top and also articulating process in a bottom. These are the ones that allow one vertebrae to be attached to the superior vertebrae and also attached to the, post, uh, to the inferior vertebrae. The two that are sitting on a superior part now known as the superior articulating process. The one that are sitting in a bottom known as inferior articulating process. Now, and when two vertebrae attach to each other, they produce this letter notch. This letter notch is known as the transverse foramen. And this is the same area where your peripheral nerve or spinal nerve exiting from this section, which, which where your uh, spinal cord is located, the nerves are going to be exiting and from there coming toward the outside. Now, this is, as I said, this is a typical looking vertebrae in thoracic, and what makes it that unique by looking at it, number one, all the vertebral foramen in the thoracic are round. That's one of the features. The other thing is that the spinous process always points inferiorly in conjunction to the other vertebrae in our body. Now, let's compare this one with the one that we have in a cervical area. Now, cervical area is a little bit odd, even you're looking at it. This is our atlas or first cervical vertebrae, which is its superior articulating process attached to the occipital condyle and produce a facet right alongside here. When you're looking at this structure, you see there is no body like this one here. There's not located. Instead, it has something which we call lateral masses on that one. The other distinguishable things in that one is, as you can see, there is no spinous process, but it has the transverse processes on either side and also presence of the holes. You can see there are a couple of holes here. These holes are known as a transverse foramina, which are the right and the left, and right through this foramina are going to be transmitting the vertebral artery as well as the vertebral vein, which are going out to your skull. C1 is sitting like this on the top of the second vertebrae, and the second vertebrae, as you can see it here, also does not have any body. Instead have this little bump, which is known as odontoid process, that exits up and attaches to the posterior part of the anterior tubercle, which is the anterior tubercle, and becomes the back of it, sits there, and allow the rotation. So we produce an axis and that acts a lot smooth rotation on that part. It also contains the foramina, the transverse foramina, and this one has spinous process, the C2, or also known as the second cervical vertebrae. 
the important thing is one of the distinguishable thing, or second distinguishable thing, because remember, the first distinguishable thing was presence of the foramen in the transverse. The second one, the spinous process, you see, is bifid. It is not like the thoracic straight. The, at the end of the spinous process, it has two heads. That's the second characteristics that you can find only within the cervical spine. From there, these are the two atypical looking cervical vertebrae. But when you're looking at it in comparison to a typical looking cervical vertebrae, now we're going to end up having the body. We're going to have the pedicles, the lamina, spinous process. Of course, it is bifid. And of course, we have these two holes known as the transverse uh, foramina right on that part. The next thing is that look in comparison to the thoracic. We said the thoracic, the vertebral canal is round. These guys are kind of oval shaped. That's another characteristic that you can find and you can distinguish by just looking at the vertebrae. Now compare all this stuff with our lumbar. Lumbar is pretty much is going to be a typically looking vertebrae, but it has a very large body. The other thing is also look at the vertebral canal. It is triangle. So within our vertebral column, the only section that has the round vertebral canal is going to be thoracic. Cervical and lumbar are going to be the same. Of course, you can see the transverse processes, the superior articulating process, and we have the lamina, pedicle, and also a spinous process that there. The other thing that is, makes it a little bit different is presence of these bumps at the end of the articulating process. Those are known as the mammillary process. A mammillary process you can find only and only in the lumbar vertebrae. So this is the one. This is the mammillary process. Little extension here and little extension here. These are the two mammillary processes that you can see. The other thing also is, if you look down here, right in this section, there is another bump that is unique to uh, lumbar vertebrae. These are known as accessory vertebrae. So these accessory tubercles that are sitting here in conjunction with the mammillary tubercles or mammillary process are going to be the two things that you can find only and only in that part. From there, we can go and look at the sacral. Sacral is going to be these triangular structures that you can see here. It's usually composed of about five or six vertebrae that are fused to each other. This is the anterior view of it, and this is going to be the posterior view. You can see this is the median sacral line. It's just like all the uh, spinous processes that are attached to each other and they are fused. You can see the foramina, where the nerves are going to be exiting in that part. And also, there is a connection that occurs between your sacrum and also parts of your pelvic. That these are known as the lumbosacral joint right in this section. Now, we can see here, this is the L4 and L5 vertebrae that they come and attach right to this section. You can see the presence of the disc. This section of the sacrum is known as the sacral promontory. And because the reason that they call it sacral promontory, this is the one that has a lot of weight on top of it. And it has to be able to endure that. As you come down toward the bottom, now you can get to the coccyx area. Okay. Coccyx pretty much means cuckoo's beak. That's a name that has been given to it. It's a Latin for that one. It's usually about four or five vertebrae that are attached, and we commonly know that one as our tailbone. Okay? All right. I, I hope that uh, this was helpful, and uh, thanks you for watching.